Chapter 1 Family and Relationships You have already studied about family and its types. Let's review it first and learn more about it. Family Parents and their children make a family. They usually live together in a home. All the members of a family help each other in household work. A child learns not only how to speak, read and write, but also how to behave properly in a family. On the basis of the number of members in families, we can group families in the following categories. Nuclear Family In a nuclear family, parents live only with their children. A nuclear family is mostly a small family. However, a nuclear family becomes big family if there are three or more children in the family. Joint Family A joint family consists of parents and their children as well as grandparents, uncles and aunts and their children living in the same house. Extended Family Our parents, brothers and sisters are part of our immediate family. An extended family is the family which includes the relatives of both father and mother. For example, paternal grandparents, maternal grandparents, paternal uncles and aunts and their children, maternal uncles and aunts and their children, etc. All members of extended family do not live in the same house. Role of family members each member of the family plays an important role. Father earns money to support his family and mother does household chores and takes care of the children. Today in many homes, mothers have also started earning money. It is now common for both the parents to work together to look after the house. Parents provide their children with comfortable home, good food and clothes, good education etc. They help their children in doing homework. They teach their children with moral values and good manners and the habit of caring and sharing. Grandparents also help in the house in different ways. They look after the children and sometimes help with their studies and homework. They play with their grandchildren and also tell them stories. The role of the grandparents is specially important in families where both the parents are working. Children also help their parents in doing the household chores like mopping, sweeping, dusting, removing cobwebs, etc. They also fetch things from nearby shops and market. They help their parents by keeping their things at the proper place. Decision making in a family There are so many occasions when the family has to make a decision. These occasions may include as to which school should the child be admitted, when to visit any relative, what to buy on coming festival and so on. Mostly father and mother take decision together. On bigger issues, they may take the opinion of their parents before reaching a decision. In a joint family, grandparents take a decision after talking to their children. Children should give importance to the decision taken by their parents or other elders. Family Values Family members have an emotional bond with each other. Parents teach their children good values and help them to grow in life. They take care of their children with great love and do not expect anything in return. Therefore, an emotional bond develops between parents and children. Some basic values are learned and shared by the members of a family, even if they live separately. Whenever any member undergoes a crisis, others stand by him or her. The members of a family get together during summer and winter vacations of their children. Values change 
due to changes in our society, but some values remain unchanged. Example, the younger members always respect the elder members and help in household activities. They follow the advice of the elders. Spending time in the family. All the family members have free time on holidays. Everyone is in a relaxed mood. They make plans to visit places such as fair, circus, zoo, shopping mall, etc. They go for a picnic. They play indoor or outdoor games. They go to hill stations during long vacations. They also visit their relatives. In an extended family, the relatives meet at many occasions. These can be happy as well as sad occasions. These are called family gatherings. Birthday parties, festivals, wedding ceremonies, eating special meals, etc. are happy occasions. Family gatherings bring closeness between members. This helps to pass traditions from one generation to another. Family gatherings teach us patience, value and tolerance. These also teach us how to live happily. Family get-togethers make strong bonds between members. Family gatherings provide lots of fun and joy. People living in different parts of our country call their relatives by different names. Name the following relatives of yours in your mother tongue. Tick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Drag T for true and F for false statements. Fun time. Find the values which we learn from our family members from the word grid. Chapter 2. Where do babies come from? All living things produce young ones of their own kind on becoming mature. This process is called reproduction. Animals and humans produce young ones of their own kind so that the species do not die out. Some animals lay eggs, lizards, snakes, birds, Frogs, fish, crocodiles, ants are all egg-laying animals. Their young ones hatch from the eggs when the eggs are mature. The number of eggs laid varies a lot. Birds generally lay one or more than one egg at a time. The eggs have a hard outer shell. Frogs lay thousands of eggs in water which are soft and jelly-like. Similarly, fish do lay millions of tiny eggs in water. Some animals give birth to young ones and feed them with their milk. They are called mammals. Cow, dog, cat, goat, lion, bat, whale etc. are all mammals. Their young ones develop in the mother's womb before they are born. Humans and their babies Human beings are also mammals. Human babies develop inside their mother's body for nine months before they are born. From babies, they grow into children, adolescents and finally adults. Inside the mother's body, the baby gets its supply of oxygen, food and liquid from the mother's body through a tube that joins it to its mother. As the baby grows, it starts moving inside the womb and the mother can feel the baby moving and kicking. After growing inside the mother's womb for nine months, the baby is big enough to take birth. For months after the baby is born, it cannot eat or drink what we eat. The baby depends only on its mother's milk. 
the baby is protected and taken care of by the parents. Parental care. Not all animals take care of their offspring. In fact, most fish and insects just lay their eggs and move on, leaving them behind. Among all animals, birds and mammals protect and feed their young ones. Most baby birds, when they hatch, are very weak. The parent birds make a warm nest, protect and feed them until they learn to fly. Adoption and foster parents Raising of a child by a couple or an individual who is not born to them is called adoption. The parents who look after the adopted child are called foster parents of the adopted child. Adoption is a kind deed. Children who lose their parents in accidents or natural calamities are brought to an orphanage. Unfortunate parents who have lost their child or are childless come to an orphanage to adopt a child. They look after him or her. The child gets love, care and a new home for the new family. Match the animals with their young ones. Tick the correct box for each animal. Tick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Chapter 3 our sense organs. We are able to see, hear, smell, taste and feel because of our sense organs. They help us move around, find food, escape danger etc. There are five senses which help us know about our surroundings. They are sight from the eyes, sound from the ears, smell from the nose, taste from the tongue and touch from the skin. The sense organs contain thousands of nerves. They pick up signals from the outside world and carry them to the brain. The brain processes the signals and sends a message back to the sense organs. We should take care of our sense organs. We should not rub our eyes if some dust particles enter it. We should wash our eyes with cold water. We should not put any sharp objects into our ears or nose. We should also keep them clean. We should not play in dirty places. Touch Simply by using our sense of touch, we can make out a large number of things without actually seeing them. We can feel different sensations in our skin. We can sense touch, temperature, pressure. Though we have skin all over the body, our hands are more sensitive to touch. The nerves in our skin carry message to the brain which tells us what kind of touch it is. Sense of touch can help us keep safe. To keep safe, do not touch sharp objects like knives, blades etc. Hot objects like fire, a hot iron etc. Plants with thorns like cactus, bougainvillea. Good touch, bad touch. When some people like our mother or father touch us, we feel comfortable, needed and loved. You feel nice when you are cuddled by your mother or patted on the back for some achievement. Such touches give you a good feeling. Some touches make you feel uncomfortable or can hurt you, like hitting, pushing, kicking. Any touch that makes you uncomfortable is a bad touch. It is important to trust your feelings about good and bad touch to keep yourself safe. Smell Which part of your body do you use to smell? Our sense of smell is in our nose, inside our nostrils, our nerves that catch, a smell that goes into our nose with the air. The nerves send a message to our brain which figures out what the smell is. 
the fragrance of a rose flower, perfume, a burning incense are pleasant. Smells of garbage and rain are unpleasant. Some people are allergic to some smells and start sneezing repeatedly on smelling that object. You must have experienced that the food you eat does not taste so good when you have a cold. This is because the sense of smell and taste are closely linked. Differently abled or special people. Some people cannot speak, hear or see. Such people are called differently abled or special people. In people who cannot speak or hear, other senses like those of touch and smell are more developed. People who cannot see are called blind. They use a stick to walk. It warns them of any hurdle on their way. They use a special script called Braille script to read and write. This script is written on thick paper with raised dots. Sense of touch helps blind people read the Braille script. People who cannot hear are called deaf. They use a special sign language to understand what others are saying. It is our duty to be kind and helpful to special people and not make fun of them. Match the sense organs with the functions they perform. Tick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Chapter 4 Playing is fun. We all love to play. Playing is the best way to relax our body and mind. The games that we play are of two types indoor games and outdoor games. Games that we play in our homes are called indoor games. Chess, Ludo, Caram, etc. are indoor games. Games that we play in a playground or a park are called outdoor games. Cricket, football, hockey, etc. are outdoor games. Games at school. We play different types of games like Kho Kho, Kabaddi, Cricket, Football, Badminton, Basketball, Volleyball, etc. in our school during the games period. The PD teacher issues sports equipments to the children to play. Most schools keep sports equipments like bats, balls, stumps, footballs, hockey sticks and nets for students to play at school. These sports equipments are kept in the sports room. Whether in school or at home, we should include all our friends for playing. We should play with children who come from different backgrounds or speak different languages. We should play together without differentiating between boys and girls. Games at home. At home, we play games like Ludo, Carom, Chess, etc. We play these games with our family members or friends of our colony. We also play games like hide and seek, football and cricket in the colony. Adventure Sports There are some sports in which danger is involved. These sports are called adventure sports and require special skills and practice. Nowadays, adventure sports are becoming very popular among people of all ages. River rafting, mountaineering, scuba diving, skiing and paragliding are some examples of adventure sports. Rules Each game has some rules. We should know the rules of the game before we play it. Referees can be appointed to ensure that the game is played in a fair way. Playing games teaches us about discipline, tolerance, honesty and fairness. Fair play means that we should have the sportsman spirit while playing. 
Games should be played by following the rules. Equal opportunity should be given to each player. Every player's opinion should be respected. Opinion of officials should be accepted. We should play all games in a fair manner and avoid fights. Other ways of recreation. Any activity which we do in our free time to refresh ourselves is called recreation. Some of the ways of recreation are flying kites, watching television, reading books, playing video games, going on picnic with family and friends and going to fair and circus. Circus We can have a lot of fun at the circus. It is held inside the large tent. The clowns dress in funny costumes and the painters with their humorous acts. The trapeze artists entertain us with their acrobatics on the swing. The jugglers perform tricky balancing acts with balls and other objects. Many animals also perform tricks to entertain the audience. Zoo We love to see animals like elephants, giraffes, lions, monkeys, zebras, deer, tigers and bears. The sight of animals at the zoo refreshes us. We learn so much about animal behavior at the zoo. Fair Big fairs or meals are organized on festive occasions such as Diwali, Tessera, Christmas etc. A typical mela has many stalls that sell food items, handicrafts, toys, clothes etc. We also find different rides and swings at the mela. Family functions Family functions like birthday parties and weddings refresh us. We meet our relatives and friends on such occasions. We relish eating delicious food with them. We also wear our best clothes on these occasions. Family functions strengthen bonds between our relatives and us. Traditional Indian Sports Games that originated in our country centuries ago and are still being played are called traditional games. Most traditional Indian games were played in groups and help children build their logical thinking and coordination. Many traditional games got lost with the passage of time, but there are still many which are played even in our modern times. Let's know about some traditional games of India. Gilly Danda Gilly Danda is one of the most interesting traditional games of India. It is played with two wooden sticks, a gilly and a danda. The gilly is about 3 to 4 inches long and tapered at the end. The danda is about 2 feet long and used to strike the gilly. Kite flying Kite flying is an ancient traditional sport of India. However, the Chinese were the first people to use kites. Different messages used to be sent through colored kites. In India, people fly colorful kites on Makar Sankranti, Raksha Bandhan and Independence Day. The thread that holds the kite when flying is called Manja. Kite flyers often compete with each other by cutting each other's kites. Kite flying competitions are often held in various parts of the country. Spinning Tops You must have seen the picture of a top. It is also called Lattu. This pear-shaped toy is made up of wood, has a string wrapped around its top. The string is pulled with a practiced jerk to make the top spin on its pin. Name the games the following are associated with. Correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Chapter 5 Working Hands We need money to fulfill all our needs and desires, be it food, clothes, house, 
education, health services or any other luxury. So, we need to work to earn money. The work which people take up to earn money is called their profession or occupation. Different people choose different occupations based on their needs and the kind of work they are able to do. Skilled work Some kinds of work require specific education in some institutes. This education is provided by experts and professionals. Teachers, doctors, lawyers, architects, engineers, chartered accountant, etc. are all the professions of skilled work. Mukesh Sahani is a civil engineer. He makes plans for building bridges, roads, houses, etc. He uses compasses and scales to draw his plans on papers. Many people work with him. After school, he had joined an engineering college to learn his work. Shruti Dhawan is a doctor. She works in a famous government hospital. She examines sick and injured people and prescribes medicines. She had gone to a medical college to study medical science. Akash Jari is a pilot. He flies aeroplanes in a private airlines. He joined flying club where he learned to fly an aeroplane. Anuradha Malik is a teacher. She teaches environmental studies in a reputed school. She is an excellent teacher. After completing her degree course, she had done B.Ed. Bachelor of Education. There are some jobs that do not require higher educational qualification, but certain skill-based training which is provided in polytechnics and other institutes. All jobs like mechanic, tailor, beautician, driver, computer operator, fashion designer, etc. fall in this category. Arvind is a tailor. He stitches garments using a sewing machine, needle and thread. He creates beautiful dresses for both males and females. He had learned stitching clothes from a stitching school. Abhilasha is a beautician. She uses scissors, combs and various powders and creams to make people look smart and beautiful. She had gone to a beauty care school to learn her skills. Raj Mahajan is a bus driver. He had learned driving from a driving school. He is a very skilled driver and drives the bus in a school. He follows all the traffic rules and is a very responsible driver. Lokesh is a motor mechanic. He repairs car engines and fixes other problems in four-wheelers in a renowned garage. He had learned his skills from a polytechnic. Unskilled work Some jobs do not need any kind of training or education. The children learn it from their parents and this goes on in the family. These jobs are unskilled. For example, work of potters, weavers, painters, sweepers, milkmen, vendors, cobblers, gardeners, etc. come under unskilled work. Madhav is a potter. He lives in a small village. He makes beautiful clay pots on potter's wheel. His father and grandfather were also potters. He had learned the art of making pots from them. Shyamal is a cobbler. He mends and polishes shoes. He also makes new shoes. He uses nylon thread, nails and different types of tools for his work. Ali is a carpenter. He has his own shop. Earlier, the shop was run by his father. He makes wooden furniture, doors, windows, etc. Mukund is a washerman. He washes clothes and irons them. His family members help him in his work. He came to the city from village and learned his work by practice. The Women of India Marching Forward In the past, women were not encouraged to get education or take a job. However, things have changed since then. Now women get equal opportunities to get education and work in different fields. They work as teachers, doctors, social workers, engineers, scientists, train drivers, pilots and even astronauts. 
many women have also joined the armed forces and the police. Indira Gandhi was the first woman Prime Minister of India. She held this post for many years. Pratibha Patel became the first woman President of India in 2007. She held this post for five years. Santosh Yadav is the first woman in the world who climbed Mount Everest twice. Kalpana Chapla was the first India-born woman astronaut to go into the space. Kiran Bedi is a retired IPS officer. She was one of the most famous and popular women police officers of India. Lakshmi Lakra is the first woman who drives the real engine. Similarly, men have also ventured beyond their traditional fields of work. They are now seen taking up professions like steward, chef, fashion designer, hairstylist and makeup artist. Sanjeev Kapoor is one of the most celebrated chefs in India. Although earlier cooking was considered appropriate only for females. Similarly, Manish Malhotra is a famous fashion. Look at the pictures of people given below and drag their professions. Take the correct option. Drag D for true and F for false statements. Tick the correct option. Drag D for true and F for false statements. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Chapter 6 Getting Food We all need food to live. It gives us energy to work and play. Food is essential for our growth. It helps us stay healthy by protecting us against diseases. Food from Plants Most of the foods that we eat comes from plants. Cereals, pulses, fruits and vegetables, spices and edible oils are all obtained from different plants. We get beverages such as coffee, tea and cocoa from plants. People have used herbs and spices for centuries to flavor and preserve food. Cereals Cereals are the seeds of plants. Wheat, rice, maize, oat, millets and barley are some common cereals. Wheat is usually ground to flour. Bread, roti, naan, puris and parathas are made from wheat flour. Rice is a staple or basic food in many parts of the country. It is eaten in many forms during all meals. Oats, maize, wheat and rice flakes are also eaten as breakfast cereals. Pulses Pulses are dried seeds of plants. They are very rich in proteins. They are also called lentils. Arhar, Urad, Black Gram, Green Gram, Bengal Gram, Kidney Beans, Chickpea, Masoor are different types of pulses. Fruits and Vegetables Fruits and vegetables are protective foods. They are an important part of our daily diet and provide us with essential vitamins and minerals. Fruits are the fleshy part of plants. Apple, mango, banana, orange, papaya, guava, pomegranate, grapes are some popular fruits. Most fruits are eaten raw. Almonds, cashew nuts, peanuts, walnuts, raisins, pistachio, pine nuts are some of the dry fruits eaten by us. Vegetables are different edible plant parts. Carrots, turnips and radishes are roots. Potato, onion and ginger are stems. Spinach, mint, coriander, cabbage are leaves.
cauliflower and broccoli are flowers. Some vegetables are eaten raw, some are cooked and eaten. Well, there are some vegetables that are eaten both raw and in cooked form. Oil seeds. Seeds which are crushed to extract oil are called oil seeds. Mustard, coconut, peanut, sunflower, olive, sesame, soya bean are some common oil seeds. Different oils are used for cooking food in different parts of India. Spices Spices are added to food to give it color, taste and flavor. They are the seeds, leaves, bark or roots of plants that have strong smell and taste. They add color and flavor to food. They also help us digest the food better. Red chili, black pepper, turmeric, cardamom, garlic, bay leaves, cloves, mustard seeds, cinnamon, etc. are some spices that are added to food. The journey of food from field to our home. The farmer prepares the soil by tilling and plowing. Once the soil becomes soft, he adds manures and fertilizers to make the soil rich in nutrients. He chooses the seeds of seasonal plants and sows them. Proper irrigation of fields is done at regular intervals. Insecticides, pesticides and other chemicals are sprayed to protect the crops from insects like locusts and other pests. When the crops start ripening, they are harvested. The produce is then packed in suitable packing. The produce is stored carefully away from rodents and other pests. Fruits and vegetables are immediately sent to the Monday wholesale market. They are usually transported by trucks, tractors or bullock carts. Cereals and pulses are sent to different parts of the country by trucks and goods trains. From Monday, food items are bought by retailers. These retailers sell the products in the local market. We buy food stuff from these retailers. These food items are then cleaned, washed and cooked. Then we eat and enjoy these food items. Animal Farms We get milk, eggs and meat from animals. These animals are mostly kept on the farms. A farm where cows and buffaloes are reared for milk is called a dairy farm. A farm where hens are kept for their eggs and meat is called a poultry farm. Think and number the pictures in a proper sequence to show how crops are grown. Drag T for true and F for false statements. Chapter 7 Eating Together In most families, all the members take dinner together. On the dining table, they share their experience of the day with each other. It creates a bond of oneness among all the members. Eating together brings us closer to each other. Sometimes, many people eat together on family functions like birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, etc. On many festivals, people eat together. At schools, students eat together in dresses. Eating together creates a sense of unity and togetherness. Family Functions Besides family dinners, there are other special occasions when all members of our family, extended family, friends and neighbors eat together. Birthday parties, festivals, picnics, marriage ceremonies are some such family functions. The halvais or the caterers prepare food in bulk for these functions. These functions and ceremonies are held in well-decorated banquet halls, lawns and farmhouses 
and sometimes even at our homes. Community eating. When a large number of people eat together, it is called community eating. All of them are not related to us. They are from different families and of different religions. It gives a feeling of oneness. Let's see some examples. Langar. It is a common kitchen where food is prepared on a large scale. Langars are free meals organized in almost all big gurdwaras. At the langar, people irrespective of caste and status eat together. People are made to sit on mats. Prasada or langar is served. The food served is purely vegetarian. There is no discrimination between rich and poor. Everyone is treated equally and served the same food. There are many people involved in organizing a langar. There are people who prepare food, others who serve the food once it is prepared and another group who ensure that the place is clean after the food is served. The langar was started by Guru Amar Das. It combines three noble principles, charity, community service and social equality. Bhandara Similar to a langar, the Hindus also organize community meals which are called bhandaras. These are mostly organized on some religious occasions. Their food is served to all for free. This food is also purely vegetarian and is served on disposable plates made of dried and pressed leaves. Eating together at school We have a lot of fun during lunch break in our school. We all share our meals every day during lunch time. There is so much variety in food. Sharing our meals brings us closer to our friends. In boarding schools, some schools have a facility for children to study and live there. These schools provide children with fooding and lodging. Such schools are called boarding schools. Here, food is cooked in a common kitchen and is served in a common dining hall to the students. Midday Meal The Indian government has started the midday meal scheme where food is served to all students. These meals were started to improve the health of students because many of the students cannot afford to bring healthy food to school. This was also an initiative to increase attendance in schools. In the midday meals, rice, dal, idlis, chapatis, sambar, etc. are served. When the bell rings for the midday meal, all the children come out of their classes and wash their hands properly. They stand in a queue with their plates to take the midday meal. They all sit down in a row with their friends. They have a variety of food served on different days. Sometimes they have alu puri, rice sambar, dal rice, idlis, rice with vegetables and gravy. On important days like Independence Day or Diwali, a special dish is served. The main advantages of a midday meal are It encourages children from the weaker section of society to come to school. It provides employment to many people. It teaches basic eating habits and manners to children. It raises a sense of equality among children. It provides underprivileged children with a healthy meal and gives them the nutrition required for a healthy life. Owing to implementation of this scheme, poor families have started sending their children to school, thinking that at least once in a day their children would get proper meal. the correct option. Drag D for true and F for false statements. Chapter 8 Houses Then and Now We all need a house to live in. A house is a place that provides safety to its inhabitants. In earlier times, the shelters made by human beings were built of animal hides, straws, 
stones etc with the passage of time mud bricks wood and stone came into use today the houses are constructed with a wide variety of materials like wood bricks steel concrete iron aluminium glass and plastic we can see different types of houses in villages and towns houses in the past kachcha house earlier most of the people used to live in villages they used readily available building materials to build their huts the easily available building materials were bamboo mud straw leaves etc these houses were not strong houses they were mostly kachcha houses havelis rich families in the village used to live in havelis they were strong houses made of stones bricks wood etc the doors and windows were made up of heavily carved wood the houses had high ceilings which allowed better air circulation all the rooms had large windows and ventilators there was a lot of open space in and around the house the houses had huge courtyards and spacious rooms the kitchen used to be smoky and full of soot because they used cow dung cakes or firewood as fuel people used oil lamps and lanterns to light their houses since there was no electricity then all the walls in the houses had special places where these oil lamps and lanterns could be placed people drew water either from the wells in their courtyard or hand pumps in the olden times most people lived in joint families houses in the present the houses have undergone major changes with the increase in population and the change from joint family to nuclear family system today people live in two or three room apartments each house today does not have an open space around it houses nowadays are designed according to convenience health sanitation and economy of people whatever the type of house it may be it is important to keep it clean multi story buildings there is lack of space in cities thus today multi story buildings called skyscrapers are being designed to utilize small spaces these buildings have many floors they are pakka houses made of strong building materials like cement brick iron etc the flats in these buildings have spacious rooms the building complexes have beautiful lawns parks and community halls these houses have assigned places for parking cars and have good security arrangements services like maintenance plumbing electrical repairs power backup are provided single story houses some people in cities live in single story independent houses they are also made of bricks cement iron etc these are simple houses they have small rooms and flat roofs made of concrete bungalows these are spacious single or double story houses they have large courtyards spacious rooms and large windows they have many rooms bedrooms drawing room study room a play room for children a guest room for guests rooms for servants of the house such houses also have a garage to park vehicles etc these are well lit houses with lawns and beautiful terraces residential colonies or townships some of the builders today are constructing townships or colonies these are residential colonies having all the necessary facilities like bank school hospital market etc in the neighborhood the houses in the colony have a common boundary wall the houses may have two or three stories people prefer to stay in these colonies because they feel safe in these colonies some houses have independent floors one flat on a floor and some have 3 to 4 apartments on each floor slums people from villages come to cities in search of work due to poverty 
They are forced to live in places called slums. They build their very small house in these areas using bricks, mud, tin sheets and plastic sheets. These are unauthorized colonies and do not have electricity, water supply and drainage facilities. These slums are highly prone to diseases because of unhygienic living conditions. The government is taking steps to provide low-cost housing with basic facilities for the slum dwellers. Chawl Some big cities like Mumbai have chawls. These are highly congested colonies. A number of families live in one-room houses. Here, many families can be accommodated who cannot afford independent houses. These houses do not have much open space. Can you number the following houses from the earliest to latest? Tick the correct option. Drag D for true and F for false statements. Name the following. Fun time. Jigsaw puzzle. Number the segment in proper order to make a bungalow. Chapter 9 Buildings and Bridges We build houses to live in. Building a house is like a project and it requires a lot of things that take place in a certain order. Many people are involved in the entire construction of a house. A number of skilled and unskilled people work to construct the buildings or houses we live in. Architects, masons, Carpenters, electricians, painters, plumbers and laborers are some of them. People involved in building a house Builder The builder is the owner of the land and hires various skilled and unskilled people to construct a building. Architect The architect draws the design of the building to be constructed. It shows the layout of the house with its rooms, doors, windows and open areas. Engineer The engineer ensures that the building is constructed according to the plan made by the architect. Once the design of the building is finalized, different groups of skilled people get involved in its construction. The foundation of the building is laid down. It is the most important part of construction. A strong foundation is very important for the safety of the house. Mason Masons with the help of other laborers use bricks, cement and concrete mixtures to build the walls, ceiling and roof of the house. They plaster the walls and lay the tiles. Flooring is done at the end. Welders Welders join metal pieces by welding. They make different types of doors windows, railings and such things. Carpenter The carpenter does all the woodwork. He uses hammer, kaisel, plane and nail remover as tools. Electrician The electrician lays the electrical wires around the house and fits electrical appliances like tube lights and fans. He uses tools like wrench, pliers, screwdriver, soldering, iron, etc. Plumber The plumber lays water pipes, fixes taps and other bathroom accessories. His tools are pliers, pincer, hammer, wrench, spanner, etc. Painter The painter uses brushes, paints, rollers, etc. to paint the house and make it beautiful. Building materials Different materials are used to build a building. Bricks are the most basic and important materials used for construction. Brick Formation Bricks are made of clay which is fine and sticky. It is mixed with water to make it soft. 
the mixture is poured into molder to obtain rectangular wet bricks. The wet bricks are stacked to dry before baking them in a kiln. The hot bricks are then cooled. The bricks now obtained are hard and strong. Many other materials are also used for constructing a building like glass, wood, steel, iron and cement. Cement Cement is a powdered substance which when mixed with sand and water sets into a hard strong mass. It is applied between the bricks to hold the bricks firmly. A mixture of cement, sand and crushed stones is called concrete. Concrete is used for making roads and pavements because of its property of becoming hard and strong on drying. Bridges Bridges have been built by man since the ancient times. Early bridges were very simple. Gradually, men learned the utility of bridges and they started making their own bridges. A bridge is a structure that is built over a road, railway track, river etc. so that people or vehicles can cross from one side to the other. The construction of a bridge is a complex process. It may take several years and thousands of skilled and unskilled laborers to construct a bridge. All of them work as a team. The engineers design the bridge structure and supervise the construction process. Most bridges can be broadly classified into the following types. Beam bridge. A beam bridge is the oldest type of bridge. It consists of a horizontal structure called a beam which rests on support on either end. The modern beam bridges are built of steel and concrete. A long beam bridge has many pillars to support the beam. Arch bridge. An arch bridge is also an old type of bridge. Early arch bridges were built of bricks and stones. Now, concrete and steel is used. This type of bridge is characterized by a semicircular structure. Arch bridges are stronger than beam bridges. Suspension bridge. In suspension bridges, steel cables are hung from high towers on either side of the bridge. The steel cables carry the load of the bridge. Two types of cables are used in its construction. The cables which hang from the towers are the main cables. Inside the main cables are a number of small cables known as hanger cables. Cantilever bridge. A cantilever bridge is a modified form of the beam bridge. It is supported by beams at the two opposite ends. The beams are called cantilevers. The bridge extends in opposite directions from both ends and meets at the center. Bamboo bridge. In villages, bamboo bridges are commonly found. Logs of trees are used as pillars. Flat wooden pieces are then tied to these pillars with ropes. These bridges are built across small streams. Match the following people involved in construction of a house with the tools they use. Tick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Name any three instruments used by the. Identify the types of following bridges. Fun time. The pictures of some tools are given below. Drag their name and the worker to whom they belong to. Tick the correct option. Drag T for true and F for false statements. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Tick the correct option. Drag T for true and F for false statements. 
identify the types of bridges. Chapter 10 Beautiful Flowers Flowers are the most beautiful part of a plant. They are of different shapes, colors and sizes. Some plants have colorful and sweet smelling flowers such as the rose, jasmine, rajni gandha etc. Some plants have tiny flowers with no smell such as grass, weeds etc. Plants that bear flowers are called flowering plants. Some plants do not bear flowers. These are called non-flowering plants such as ferns, pines, crotons, etc. Let's know about different parts of a flower. Parts of a flower A flower has many parts. Each part of a flower has a specific function to perform. Sepals They are usually green in color. They protect the flower when it is in the bud state. Petals These are the most attractive parts of a flower. Their function is to attract insects. Stamen. It is the male part of a flower. The stamens release pollen. Each stamen has a stalk called filament and the swollen top containing pollen grains called anther. Carpel. Carpel or pistil consists of an ovary, style and stigma. These are the female parts of a flower. Formation of seeds. You must have seen a butterfly sitting on a flower. It sucks nectar to get food. While sucking nectar, it also helps in an important process known as pollination. The pollen grains from the anthers stick to the feet of the butterfly and when it sits on another flower, they are simply transferred to the pistil of another flower. Apart from butterflies, many other insects help in the transfer of pollens from one flower to another. The process of transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma is known as pollination. The pollen grains go down to the ovary and join with the tiny eggs. This process is called fertilization. Thus, a seed is formed. Once the seed is formed, the petals of a flower fall off and the seed changes into a fruit. Uses of flowers Flowers have many uses in our everyday life. They bring joy, freshness, fragrance and beauty in our lives. Here are a few uses of flowers. Some flowers like cauliflower, broccoli, etc. are eaten as vegetables. Some flowers like zinnia, marigold, etc. are used in the dyeing industry. Some flowers are used to make medicines and cosmetics. For example, rose petals are used for making rose water, which is good for eyes and skin. Sweet-smelling flowers like rose, jasmine, etc. are used for making perfumes and incense sticks. Saffron is a spice which we get from stigma of the saffron flower. It is used to flavor food and also in medicine. Some flowers are used for decoration purposes. In marriages or some festivals or functions, they are used to decorate houses, doorways, places of worship, etc. Extract of flowers like rose and hibiscus are used to make a drink called sherbet. Honey from flowers Many flowers produce a sweet-smelling liquid called nectar. Insects like bees suck nectar from these flowers and carry it to their hives. A beehive consists of thousands of tiny chambers called combs. The bees spit out the nectar that they have sucked into these combs. They seal the nectar with the wax which they produce themselves. Slowly, the nectar turns into honey. It is stored as food for the bees and their young ones. Beekeepers called apiarists rear bees to get honey. This is called apiculture. The place where bees are reared is called an apiary. When a honeycomb is full of honey, it starts dripping as the cells that store honey become weak and begin to crack. 
the beekeeper then smokes all bees out of the honeycomb by burning dried straw and branches under the hive honey is then collected from the honeycomb honey takes on the fragrance of the flowers from which the nectar is collected honey is full of vitamins and minerals nutritionists say that eating honey delays the aging process having it with lemon and warm water in the morning is good for the skin and is helpful in losing weight Pick the correct option. Can you recognize me? Chapter 11 Animals Living in Groups Animals are of different shapes and sizes. Some are big and some are small. Some have thick fur on their bodies and some do not have fur. Different animals have different patterns on their skin. Some animals and insects prefer to live in groups. These groups are led by a leader. The leader takes the decisions. Animals feel safe and secure in a group. The group members alert each other as soon as they see any danger. They find it easy to hunt for their prey in groups. Whenever any member of the group is sick, the other members help him or her. Animal groups. Some of the animals that live in a group are hippopotamuses, lions, wolves, gibbons, elephants, etc. Hippopotamuses live in groups of 10 to 150 animals. They have an adult female as their leader. Lions live in groups called prides. There are 6 to 30 animals in a pride. Usually, there are one or two adult males in a group. A lioness is the leader of the pride. She provides food to the males as well as the cubs. Wolves live together in groups called pack. A pack of wolves consists of two or three couples and their young ones. The pack has one male and one female leader. Any member who disobeys the leader is thrown out of the group. Elephants group known as herd consists of 10 to 12 females and their young ones. The oldest female of the group becomes the leader and the decision maker. When a male elephant turns 14 or 15 years of age, it leaves the group. Insect groups some insects like bees, ants, termites, etc. also live in groups. Their group is called a colony. Each member of the colony has its own duty to perform. Ants live together in a group having queen. She is the leader of the colony and her only job is to lay eggs. Drones. They are males and help in reproduction. Workers. Around 50,000 female workers are there in a colony. They cannot lay eggs but keep on working all the time to care for the eggs and to collect food for the entire colony. Certain unusual names are given to some animal groups. Group of cats, clouder. Group of foxes, skulk. Group of kangaroos, troop. Group of giraffes, tower. Group of tigers, pride. Group of polar bears, flash. Group of bears, bumble. Group of seals, trip. Group of camels, flock. Group of honeybee, swarm. Shy and friendly animals. 
Some animals are not familiar with us. They do not like our company. They disappear when they see us or hear a sound. Deer, squirrel, mouse, lizard, fox, birds, etc. are shy animals. They quickly move away when they see anybody approaching them. Some animals like cows, dogs, dolphins, cats, horses, etc. are friendly animals. They like our company and become friends easily. They come close to us and accept food. Animal friends Animals have a very helpful and cooperative nature. They help each other in a number of ways like friends. Birds like egrets sit on the back of animals like horses, deer, buffalo, etc. and eat small insects hidden in the bodies of these animals. Egyptian birds called plovers use their long beaks to pick up bits of flesh from a crocodile's teeth. Rhinoceroses get rid of fleas and ticks with the help of ox peckers. They pick up fleas and ticks from the body of rhinoceros. Spiders and lizards are helpful to humans as they help us by eating away small insects like mosquitoes. Identify the skin and drag the names of the animals. Pick the correct option. Drag the names of the following groups. Drag T for true and F for false statements. Fun time! Find out the names of any 10 groups of animals in the word grid. Chapter 12 Where do animals live? Animals need food and shelter to live. They need shelter to protect themselves from enemies, heat, cold and rain. The surroundings in which they live is called their habitat. The change in animals to suit themselves to their surroundings is called adaptation. We see different types of animals around us. On the basis of their habitat, animals have been divided into five main categories. Terrestrial animals. Animals that live on land are called terrestrial animals. Animals like lions, elephants, cows and foxes are some terrestrial animals. Aquatic animals. Animals that live in water are called aquatic animals. Starfish, octopuses, whales, sharks and crabs are some aquatic animals. Amphibian Animals that live both in water and on land are called amphibians. Frog, tortoise and crocodile are some amphibians. Aerial Animals Animals that fly in air are called aerial animals. Birds, bats and butterflies are examples of aerial animals. Arboreal Animals Animals that spend most of their time living in trees are called arboreal animals. Chimpanzees, monkeys and baboons are arboreal animals. Animal Homes like us, animals also need food and shelter. For protecting themselves from rain, heat, cold and enemies, some animals build their own houses. A spider weaves a web to live and to catch insects for food. Honeybees build hexagonal structures called hives. They live and lay eggs in these hives. Bees also make honey in the beehives. Birds build nests using various things like leaves, twigs, pebbles, etc. They lay their eggs in nests and take care of their young ones. Some animals live in natural environment. They are called wild animals. They live in natural homes like caves, holes, burrows, etc. 
Some animals are kept in homes or on farms. They are called domestic animals. They live in man-made shelters. Cows and buffaloes are kept in a shed. Horses are kept in a stable. Dogs are kept in a kennel. Hens are kept in a coop. Animals in very hot and cold places. Deserts are the hottest place on earth. In spite of very high temperature, little vegetation and scarcity of water, some animals live in the desert. They are adapted to live in such conditions. Scorpion, rattlesnake and jerboa are found in deserts. They go underground or hid under rocks to escape the heat. Camel is too big to protect itself like this. It has special features that help it live in desert. A camel has padded feet that help it walk on sand. It can drink a large amount of water at one time and live on it for a number of days. It has a huge hump where it stores fat which is useful when it gets no food. It can eat plants like cactus that grow in the desert. Animals in cold regions Polar regions remain covered with snow throughout the year. Animals like polar bears, arctic foxes, seals and penguins live in these regions. These animals have a thick layer of fat under their skin called blubber. Many of these animals have a coat of thick and long fur. So these animals bear the extremely cold weather in this region. Nocturnal Animals Some animals remain idle during the day and become active at night. These animals are called nocturnal animals. Kangaroo rat is a nocturnal animal. It lives in desert areas in a cool underground hole. It comes out of its hole at night when the weather is relatively cool. Some other nocturnal animals are owls, leopards, bats and hedgehogs. These animals have highly developed sense of sight, smell and hearing. Birds and their nests. Birds live in homes called nests. They make their nests on their own. They make nests to lay eggs and to take care of their young ones. Nests also protect the birds from their enemies and bad weather. Nests are made up of straw, hair, fibers, dry grass, leaves, threads, twigs, feathers, etc. Different birds make different kinds of nests. Their nests have different shapes and they are made of different materials. Different kinds of nests. The crow builds its nest high up on a tree. A woodpecker makes a hole in the trunk of a tree with its kaisal shaped beak. The tailor bird makes its nest by sewing leaves together using its sharp beak. It lays its eggs in the fold of the leaf that it has made. Sparrows and pigeons build their nests on window edges, ventilators and even on ceiling fans. They use dry leaves and twigs to make their nests. Weaver birds weave their nests from grass and leaves with their beaks. The nest hangs down from the branches of the tree. It has a slight bend inside it which prevents the eggs or the young ones from slipping out. Penguins live in cold places. Since it is difficult to find twigs and leaves there, penguins simply put together a few pebbles and their nest is ready. Find out the names of four man-made homes for pet and farm animals whose pictures are given below. Pick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Solve the following riddles. Match the following birds with their homes. Fun time! Look at the pictures and recognize the birds. Also, drag their names.
Chapter 13 Teeth, Beaks and Claws Animal Teeth Depending on the type of food they eat, animals have different types of teeth. Herbivores or plant-eating animals like sheep, cow, goat and giraffe have sharp front teeth to cut the grass. Their back teeth are flat and broad which help them to chew and grind the food. They lack canines and have a gap between the front and back teeth. Tusks of an elephant are the incisors on the upper jaw which are used to break plants and as a tool for digging and fighting. Nine animals like squirrel, rat and rabbit have small and sharp front teeth to bite into nuts and fruits. These animals are called rodents. Carnivores are flesh-eating animals like lion, tiger, dog and cat have sharp and pointed teeth at the front to tear the flesh. Their back teeth are flat and strong which help them to chew the flesh. Snakes have sharp curved teeth. Teeth of snakes are curved backwards into their throat but they do not chew their prey. They swallow it. Frogs and lizards do not have teeth. They use their long, sticky tongue to catch flies and mosquitoes. Beaks and Claws Birds do not have teeth. They eat with the help of their beaks. Some birds use their beaks to protect themselves from the enemies. The bird's beak and claws can tell us much about the kind of food they eat and their habitat. Some different kinds of beaks are shown ahead. Strong and Curved Beak A parrot has a strong and curved beak. It breaks open nuts and fruits with its help. Strong, sharp and hooked beak Eagles have a strong, sharp and hooked beak. Vultures and owls also have sharp, strong and hooked beaks. With the help of their beaks, they can tear the flesh of their prey easily. Long and Pointed Beak A sunbird has a long and pointed beak. It uses its beak to suck nectar from flowers. Hummingbirds also have a long and pointed beak. Sharp, strong and pointed beak. A woodpecker has a sharp, strong and pointed beak to make holes in wood and tree trunks. Broad and flat beak. A duck has a broad and flat beak. Muddy water is taken inside the beak. The mud and water flow out of tiny holes in the beak leaving behind tiny plants and insects. Geese also have broad and flat beaks. Small and pointed beak. A sparrow has a small, strong and pointed beak. It eats grains with its help. Pigeons do have a small, strong and horny beak. Broad, long and pointed beaks. Cranes and kingfishers have a broad, long and pointed beak to catch fish from rivers. Feet and Claws The feet and claws help the birds in searching for food. They also protect them from enemies. Birds have two to four toes on each foot that they use for grasping, perching and scratching. Sharp and Strong Claws Eagles and vultures have sharp and strong claws to catch their prey. They are called talons. Webbed Feet Ducks have webbed feet. They have three toes in front and one at the back. The three front toes have thin skin between them. The skin helps to push back water while swimming. Sharp and Hard Claws Hens have sharp and hard claws. They have three long toes in the front and one short toe at the back. They are called scratchers. Perching birds like crows, sparrows and pigeons have three toes in front and one at the back. This helps them to grip the branch of the tree firmly. Birds like cranes and flamingos walk through water. This is known as wadding. They have long legs with well spread out toes which help them to walk in muddy water. Can you name the following types of teeth? the correct option.
fill in the blanks with suitable words. Match the following. Fun time. Beaks and claws of birds are given below. Identify the birds and drag their names in the given space. Chapter 14 Our Transport Early man needed to go from place to place to visit people and see places. In the beginning, he travelled on foot. Later on, he started taming animals and trained them to carry him and his goods. He also learned to float rafts on the water of rivers and streams. Thus, started a system of transport by land and water. The invention of the wheel brought about a big change in the system of transportation. Man now moved from place to place using hand carts with wheels to bullock carts and horse carriages. Now, there are a number of modern vehicles to help us go quickly from one place to another. These include cars, trucks, buses, trains and aeroplanes. Land Transport There are two means of transport by land, roads and railways. Roads Roads connect different places and make it possible for us to travel from one place to another. They also help us transport food grains, medicines and other products. This is possible because roads can be built in all places even in the remotest villages on a hill. Roads can be classified as national highways and state highways. National highways connect all the important cities with one another. They connect important cities of different states. State highways are important roads within a state. They connect all the important towns of that state. Railways The Indian Railways is one of the largest railway networks in the world. Trains are the best means of land transport for traveling over very long distances. They are inexpensive comfortable and easy to travel by. The goods trains can carry large quantities of goods to long distances. Metro Rail The Metro Rail is an important step towards improving the transportation system. The Metro is particularly useful in the crowded cities. The Kolkata Metro was the first Metro in India. Our capital city Delhi also has its own Metro. It carries thousands of passengers daily, connecting far off places in the city. Metro Rail has also been started in some other cities like Mumbai, Bengaluru, and Jaipur. Water transport Boats and motor boats are used for covering short distances. Ships and steamers are used for covering longer distances. They can also carry a large number of passengers. Cargo ships are used for transporting large quantities of goods like oil or bulky goods between countries. India has only a few rivers that are used for water transport. The coasts have a number of important ports namely Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Kandla, Vishakhapatnam, Cochin, etc. Air Transport Air transport is the fastest means of transport. It is used for traveling very long distances in the shortest time possible. They take us across cities, states and countries in just a few hours. They are used to drop food, medicines, etc. during wartime or floods. Aeroplanes are also used for transporting perishable items like food, flowers and special medicines. But the journey by air is very expensive. Aeroplanes that fly within the different states of a country are called domestic airlines. Those connecting different countries are called international airlines. Traveling Rajat along with his parents visited Mumbai during winter vacation. They live at Rajendra Nagar in Delhi. They had already planned for the journey a few months earlier. 
His father had booked tickets in Rajasthani Express. On the day of journey, Rajat was quite excited. His mother had packed the luggage. At 4 p.m., they hired a taxi for New Delhi Railway Station. The train arrived on time and they boarded the train easily. The train passed through plains, plateaus and forests. Rajat was thrilled to see the scenic beauty. Next day, they were in Mumbai. They stayed in a hotel there. They stayed there for five days. They visited many places there. Sometimes they traveled by an auto rickshaw, sometimes by a bus and sometimes by metro train. Rajat enjoyed a lot traveling to new places. They returned to Delhi by train. Jatin's father is in the Indian Army. His father gets transferred from one place to another every three years. It is fun to travel to new places, meet new people and eat new dishes, says Jatin. He also likes to collect traditional mementos from the places he visits. The children also enjoy the different landforms they get to see. From snow-capped mountains, sandy deserts to beautiful beaches, it is a new piece of earth every time. People may have to travel from place to place for various reasons. They may buy goods from one place and sell it in another place or they may go in search of work or they may want to move to a place that has more work opportunities. Paying for travel Buses, trains, aeroplanes etc. are called public means of transport. We have to pay money for traveling in them. We go to bus depot or to railway station or airport to purchase tickets and board these means of transport. Any money that is used for purchasing ticket or any other thing is called currency. Different countries have different currencies. The currency of India is rupee. Coins are made of metals. Commonly used coins in our country are of these denominations 1 rupee, 2 rupees, 5 rupees and 10 rupees. A coin has two sides with national emblem made on one side and called the head side and the value of the coin written on the other side called the tail side. In India, we also use paper currency like 5, 10, 50, 100, 500 and 2000 rupee notes. These are called currency notes. Notes of different values have different imprint and logos on them. Drag L for land transport, W for water transport and A for air transport in the box provided. Tick the correct option. Drag T for true and F for false statements. Tick the correct option. Drag T for true and F for false statements. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Chapter 15 Mapping Our Neighborhood Directions help us locate places. Besides directions, we must also know how to read a sketch. A sketch is the pictorial representation of a place. It can be drawn freehand. There are many landmarks that can be drawn in a sketch. Landmarks are the important places or reference points that help us in finding a place. They can be hospital, school, bus stand, park, etc. Now let us look at this sketch. It shows many landmarks. Suppose you want to reach Chirag's house from the railway station. With this sketch, you can easily find out the way. Maps A map is also a drawing or pictorial representation of the whole surface of the earth or a part of it. It is drawn on a flat surface. 
but it is made very accurately. It can be drawn from the entire earth, world map and also for smaller areas. Details on the map are given by signs, symbols and scale. This is called the languages of the map. Language of the map, the scale. The scale is the ratio between the distance on the map and its relative distance on the ground. In other words, it relates the distance between places on a map and the actual distance between places. For example, the distance between Delhi and Jaipur is 300 km. On a map, this distance is represented as 3 cm. Thus, the 300 km on the ground is represented as 3 cm on the map. That is, 1 cm equal to 100 km. This is known as the scale of the map. There are two types of scales. In the first type of scale, a statement like this is used. 1 cm equal to 100 km. In the second type of scale, we use a bar which is divided into equal divisions. It is called a linear scale. The signs, symbols and colors. The signs, symbols and colors show features like an international boundary, temple, dam, bridge, forest, river, mountain, habitation etc. Some of the symbols are shown above. Different colors are used to show different landforms. For example, blue color is used to show water bodies like oceans, seas, lakes and rivers. Green color is used for plain areas or lowlands. Dark brown color is used for hills and mountains. Yellow color is used for agricultural lands. Legend A legend or key on a map tells us what each symbol used on the map stands for. Types of maps Maps are of different types. Let us know about them. Physical map It shows physical features of a place such as landforms and water bodies. Political map It shows different states and cities. It also shows international boundaries that one country shares with its neighboring countries. Thematic maps. Some maps show information such as rainfall patterns, crops, population density, etc. of a country or region. Mention the four main directions. Tick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Fun time! Mark the neighboring countries of India on the given map. Chapter 16 Water Resources Water is a precious natural resource. Plants, animals and human beings cannot live without water. The main source of water is rain. The rain water gets collected in ponds, lakes, rivers and seas. It also seeps into the soil. This water is called underground water. We use wells, hand pumps and tube wells to take out underground water. The water contained in ponds, lakes and rivers is known as fresh water. This water does not contain salt. Water of seas and oceans contains salt. Sources of water A small area of water is known as a pond. Lakes are bigger than ponds. The water of ponds and lakes is not safe for drinking. Rivers which depend on rainfall for water are called rain-fed rivers. During the rainy season, these rivers carry a lot of water. But during the summer season, they dry up or carry a little water. Krishna and Kaveri are such rivers. A lot of snow is present in the high mountains. When this snow melts, it turns into water. This water flows down as rivers. 
These rivers are called snow-fed rivers. Brahmaputra, Ganga and Yamuna are snow-fed rivers. They originate in the Himalayas. They carry water throughout the year. Most of the rivers fall into seas. The sea water is salty. It cannot be used for day-to-day -day activities. We can get salt from sea water by evaporation. Storing water. We need to store water in dams, reservoirs and canals. Sometimes dams are built across rivers to check the flow of water. Water is stored in them and electricity is generated. A canal is a man-made waterway used for irrigation purposes. To meet the scarcity of water, the government has made these canals. These canals are dug to divert the water from water bodies like rivers and dams to the fields. Making water safe for drinking Water from rivers is not safe for drinking. It becomes contaminated because of human activities. As a result, harmful insects that cause many diseases breed in contaminated water. If we drink this water without purifying, we may fall sick. That is why there is a need to remove all the impurities from water before drinking. The government has set up water treatment plants in all the big cities of the country. Water from various water sources is first made to pass through beds of gravel and sand. All the solid impurities in it get removed by this process, which is called filtration. But even after filtration, the water does not become safe for drinking. Germs still remain in the water. For killing these germs, chlorine is added to this water. This process is called chlorination of water. Then the water is sprayed in the air to remove unwanted smell from it. It removes all the germs and smell and the water becomes fit for drinking. This is then supplied to our homes through thick pipes. After these processes of purification, it is still advisable to boil the water for around 15 to 20 minutes for removing all the impurities from it. A water filter can be used to purify water. Most people in cities and towns use water purifying systems for purifying water at home. Water Cycle The water cycle helps to maintain a balance of water on earth. It is the circulation of water between the earth's surface and its atmosphere. The sun's heat turns the water in the seas, rivers etc. into water vapor. This process is called evaporation. The vapor rises up and cools and condenses into droplets of water. This process is called condensation. These droplets form clouds. When the clouds get heavier, they fall down as rain, hail or snow. This is called precipitation. In this way, the water cycle continues to ensure balanced water distribution on earth. Tick the correct option. Fill in the blanks with suitable words. Fun time. Label the water cycle. Chapter 17 Waste Management The waste that is produced in our homes, factories, etc. is of two kinds, biodegradable and non-biodegradable. Biodegradable waste is that waste which decomposes in nature. Vegetable and fruit peels, paper, clothes and animal wastes are biodegradable waste. Non-biodegradable waste either does not decompose at all or takes a very long time to decompose. Plastic and glass are non-biodegradable waste. Waste Management The sweeper collects waste from door to door. It is then dumped at a site called landfill. 
It is an area of land where large amount of waste is buried. Landfills are located outside the town or city. If waste is not disposed of properly, it can lead to air, water and soil pollution. The biodegradable waste such as fruit and vegetable peels, food waste etc. can be used to make manure in the compost pit. We can manage waste by following the three R's. Reduce, Reuse, Recycle. Reduce, minimize the use of things such as plastic, glass, polybags etc. Reuse, use a thing again and again, put it to maximum use. Recycle, things like glass, plastic, paper etc. can be recycled. By recycling, we can conserve our natural resources. We can give bottles, buckets, aluminium cans etc. to the Kabari Bala scrap and junk dealer so that these can be recycled. Below you can see two bins of blue and green color. Place the waste in their respective bins by writing one or two in the boxes. Pick the correct option. Drag B for biodegradable and NB for non-biodegradable waste. Tick the correct option. Drag D for true and F for false statements. Tick the correct option. Drag D for true and F for false statements.